Okay, you've all seen the Soul Castle that I've been working on for the last few months. And now I want to take you through the narrow path. What I see the narrow path as. And here we go. So this is what it looks like to me when we're on the narrow path. As you can see here, the castle up here, this is the castle of our relationship with Christ. All kinds of little things in there to read, but I'll get into it in the future. Um, the narrow path right here. And from the castle, the throne in the heart, there's a river. And the river runs down the narrow path to nourish us. And it runs down and nourishes the little baby in Christ that we are. And there's little apples and fruit from the tree of life, which is right here. Okay, so I'm just going to go start breaking through, reading the narrow path. So the narrow path has difficulty, tribulation, loneliness sometimes, affliction, sorrow, suffering, purpose, passion, sacrifice, crucifixion, joy, identification with Christ, destiny, humility, exaltation, peace, growth, and glory. Now... The abomination of desolation is the first part. And this is spoken of in these verses that you can see. And Jesus spoke about the abomination of desolation. It's where, and how I see it is, you are, an abomination is a horrific thing. It's something that's horrible. And the abomination of desolation is where you are freaking out, you're horrified, because the temple is desolate. God is not in, in the temple. And you and you know that you are the temple. So here you are, you're like, I'm the temple and I'm desolate. God is not in me. And you become horrified. That's the first step in getting saved and entering onto the narrow path and getting to know Christ. Realizing how desolate you are, how in need of Christ you are, how empty you are of God, the presence of God in your life. So that's the abomination of desolation. That's how it starts. And then you behold the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. You behold him. You behold Christ. The spirit hovers over our chaotic void soul and brings the light. Just like in Genesis, the first three verses of Genesis, the spirit of God hovers over the chaos and brings light and order. Just like the Holy Spirit does over us when we get saved and born again. Then we are planted by God near living waters, pruned and cared for. John 15. Well, I'm not going to read the verses. Okay, so now we're born again as a new divine spiritual creature, adopted into the Heavenly Father's presence and family by grace through faith in Christ's substitutionary ransom death payment to Satan who legally held us hostage in evil spirit prison of fallen nature. His death also satisfied divine justice of Heavenly Father's perfect standard which calls for the death penalty to all sin and sinners. Being redeemed and counted as having died with Christ and risen from the grave, perfect and favored by God. This is a beautiful thing, you know. Okay. Keeping our mind on things above, not below. That's important. To be focused on the things of heaven. Be focused on Christ. Building up the kingdom. Being ready to live in the kingdom. Preparing ourselves, our attitude, our perceptions, our lifestyle, our habits. We want to have heavenly habits. Okay, led by the Holy Spirit's expert navigation. Being a humble child who is guided by his or her loving father in simplicity and faith. Taking each step carefully and if we step off the path, we quickly return and submit to God's discipline because it brings us back to the path of life. Over here we got here, if we step off the path, there will be stumbling blocks that God puts in your way. 
and these stumbling blocks will cause you to not be able to go too far off the path and you'll want to return. Also, if you step off the path, the vultures are coming. As it says in Job 28.7, there is a path which the vultures do not know. And that path is the narrow path. As you can see here, the narrow path the vultures don't know. But once you step off the path, the vultures are going to start eating away at your flesh. And your flesh symbolizes living for yourself. And these stumbling blocks are a blessing even though they're not fun. Um, on the narrow path, we're not really engaged in civilian affairs. We study the Bible daily and diligently. Um, always carefully advancing, never looking back. Never looking back in regret or wasting our time reminiscing when we have things to be doing. We have we have important things to be doing in this Christian life. Um, excuse me, sorry, I got this thing on a rolling chair. <laughs> Let me get back here so I can get in the lighting. So now we got spiritual warfare, armor of God, defense, offense, exercising dominion over sin, self, and Satan. All kinds of Bible verses. And anywhere you want, you can pause and look up these Bible verses. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of a long list, but, uh, so... Spiritual warfare is a big deal. We, it's uh, something that we use exercise faith with because it takes faith to fight an invisible enemy. But by faith, we can cast demons out. I set up a protective shield around our house and I prayed to God and I used my faith to kick out all evil out of the house and all kinds of things were happening around that time where we were seeing evil leave the house. And I invited angels to come help us. And a lot of that stuff was happening, is happening. Christ and his disciples over family and those of the world. That's another part of the narrow path where we're focused on Christ and, and his other disciples in, within the world. We're focused on the family of God. And, but also fam, family is very important, especially when they're Christians. Even when they're not. Okay, we get the impartation of gifts. We invest Christ and receive interest. So we're, we're receiving interest from God and we're becoming stronger and increasing in faith and spiritual riches and gifts. Um, freedom in Christ, fellowship. So we're having fellowship with others. We're enjoying freedom in Christ from over sin. Um, this keeps going just a little longer. Crucified self. So our self is crucified. We deny ourselves. We're possessionless. This is hardcore. A lot of people don't become possessionless, but when they do, God has a lot of availability in their lives. Content always. When we're on the narrow path, we're content because we're walking side by side with Jesus. Street preaching, evangelism, witnessing, tracks, signs. We're involved in spreading, doing some spiritual farming, planting seeds, speaking to people. We're not afraid. Fasting, cruelty-free vegan eating. And there's a lot of verses that recommend, that encourage and command living a harm-free life, cruelty-free life. And going vegan is, is how to fulfill that. Unity with other believers under Christ's love and authority. It has to be under truth. It has to be in truth. You can't be unified with those who are false. You can't welcome them into your house. So there's a thin line between just anyone who believes in Jesus being their close friend and someone who is actively rebellious against the Bible, yet they continue to say they're your brothers and sisters. If they ignorantly, if it's in, in ignorance, then of course we show mercy. And we try to show them the, the better way. Making disciples with Christ. That's the, that marks being on the narrow path. So all these things, and especially difficulty, tribulation, loneliness, affliction, sorrow, suffering, purpose, passion, sacrifice, crucifixion, joy, identification with Christ, destiny, humiliation, exaltation, peace, growth, and glory. 
part of the narrow path. And right here it says there's a part, there's a path of death, which seems right. And that's easy believism. It seems like it's a part of the path, the narrow path, but it's not. It leads to death. On the narrow path, we're under construction. We go through spiritual surgery on the narrow path. You know? On the narrow path, we get beheaded. And we yield to the Spirit of Christ. We, we lose our own head and our own authority and we become the body of Christ. Christ becomes our authority. We want to stay on the narrow path because there's a lot of bad things out here. We enter into sin's prison when we're not on the narrow path. All these enemy nations, these sins, wrap us up like a mummy and torture us and make us miserable. All these diseases and negative things, these wolves and spider webs are waiting for us when we enter off the narrow path. So, uh, yeah, hope you learned and were edified by this uh, Bible study tool called the Narrow Path. This is called the, the, the Castle of Your Soul, the City of Your Soul, and God's been helping me work on this for a few months now, and you just watched the portion about the narrow path and if there's anything you have that you could add to this or if you'd like to share this please share this with others if it is something God puts on your heart alright hope you're blessed hope you're edified hope you're lifted up inspired encouraged and I hope you're motivated okay do something for Jesus with Jesus